All right, so we've been looking, uh, if you've been here since last month, and we've been doing the whole WordPress part one, WordPress part two, we've been looking at a lot of WordPress where part one focused a lot on the basics of WordPress, part two, intermediate to advanced stuff, because the shopping cart stuff is advanced. Not everyone needs to do this or know how this works, but those of you that have chosen to take the class this far, um, you're learning the concepts of selling products online, and that's a very powerful thing because that means anyone can be a business person and sell any kind of product online. Physical products, virtual products, services. So the last time where we left this, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the visit site portion of my site. I'm looking at it as if, a, as if a new customer came to my site. Remember, that's just switching back and forth between the dashboard and visit site. And so I'm on, I'm on visit site just to take a quick look to remind myself, you know, a week ago was a long time ago, wasn't it? So as I recall last time, what we did was we set up our menu so that we have the shopping cart screen. We renamed it from simply products page, which was very um, sterile. And uh, that was editing a menu, which we've done before. Then we added a category of cakes, and we've got these other pages. Remember, the cakes category was created via... Um, creating a page and adding that to the adding those products to the page. Let me remind myself of one thing. If we go back to the dashboard, if you're not there already, we'll go to the dashboard and let's go to products categories. I want to see which ones we've made so far. Okay, yes. So if you go back to products and categories, it shows in my case at least, I've got cakes, cookies, and pies. And it shows that I've added two cakes, I haven't added any cookies yet, and I have one pie. So on the front end, if someone goes to the link, you don't have to do this, but remember if you go to the shop and then cakes, it's only going to show the things that are tagged, that, that are categorized as cakes, anniversary cake, birthday cake. If you go simply to the shop, it'll show everything. There's anniversary cake, there's apple pie, and there's birthday cake. So the shop link shows every product, and then the cakes page only shows cakes. Let's take a quick refresher uh, to create a brand new page here for pies, because I have at least one pie that I can show. I'm showing cakes, I want to show pies. And if a person wants to see everything, they go to the shop. So this will be a little refresher. Let's go to the dashboard. The way that it works is that if I want a category to be shown on a, on a screen, I need a placeholder. I need a page placeholder. So up on the Pages link, let's click Add New. I'm going to add a new page. This will be a placeholder. Um, add New Page. And then at the top, we can call it whatever we want, because this name that we add here can be different from the permalink. The permalink is the URL. The URL could be more SEO optimized than the title. That's fine. But for the moment, I only I want to show pies, so I'll type pies there. If you then click inside of the text area, it should show you, OK, this page is going to be called your site blah 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 slash pies. If I wanted that to say something else like, affordable pies. If I wanted my address to be mysite.com slash affordable dash pies, that could be a little bit more effort to fully SEO optimize my my site. Maybe I want to be found for affordable pies when someone searches affordable pies. What if they want to be found uh, by, what if I want to be found by um, uh, affordable vegan friendly pies in San Diego? That could be an address, a web address that I craft for this screen, instead of simply pies. This page being called pies, I'm a, I could be a needle in a haystack. But if you click edit and say affordable-vegan-pies-san Diego, and notice I'm using dashes between each word. That's what you need to do. You don't want to run them all together, because then it looks like one long word, which doesn't make sense. You don't want to use spaces because you want to avoid spaces in web addresses. Mm -hmm. Notice it's all lowercase also. That's the standard convention. Even though the page is going to say pies, visible to people, 
the search engines would see it as affordable, vegan pie San Diego. I think that's a little overkill, but I'm just showing you that you can, I would simply call it affordable vegan pies. Um, that I'm showing you that you could craft your addresses like that because that's one of the things the search engines look at. The other thing, of course, is the content of the page. So I didn't leave San Diego in the address because perhaps within the content of the page, I will mention San Diego or on the meta tags or meta description, which uh, I'll touch on a little bit later. You can change that if you'd like or not. But now that address for that is victor.com, victorsbakery.com slash affordable dash vegan dash pies. And I want to display all my pies. This is going to be a placeholder and there's a short code that will automatically take every pie that I currently have and any future pies that I add and they will automatically go on this page like this. Click in your editing area and the very last icon on the first row looks like a couple of little credit cards there. Click on that. It has a weird name if you hover over it. I actually think that's a bug. They never named it because that's remove link and that one is align center and that one is it's sort of like don't forget to put a description here and they did. With that little icon there. Go ahead and click on it. What category of content would you like to show on this page? I want to show my category of pies. I currently have one pie, but when I add seven more, they will all automatically go there. So select pies and then insert. There's a bunch of options, but we don't need to usually worry about them. Just insert pie. And the code that it writes it's for us is WPSC underscore products space category underscore ID equals nine. Internally, WordPress sees our pies category as I ID number nine in the database. And then that code is saying display all products in that category. It would be nicer, maybe in a future version, it would actually say category ID equals pies so that I can easily tell what it is. But we have to leave the numbers, we have to use the numbers. And that's all we need on this page. Go ahead and publish it. Because what will happen is then once someone visits that page, it will automatically display all products in that category. Number nine, which is pies. Um, any questions so far? Before we go look at our result, we've got a brand new page. And our pages do not show up automatically in the menu. So we have to remember to do that. Because if I were to go to the visit site, uh, go to shop, no pies. The default in our case is that the menu does not auto-populate. And that's how I recommend you do that. Um, so that you can craft your menu how you want instead of how WordPress thinks you want. So in order to edit our menu to add the new pies page, we need to go over to Appearance in the dashboard, Appearance, Menus. Go to the Appearance section and then Menus, and then you'll see on the right side there's our menu structure. And we're missing an item. We're missing pies. You see here the most recently edited pages will show up there. But if you've got a lot of pages and it's you haven't worked with one recently, you can always look at them via View All. So the most recent one that I worked on was pies. I can look on View All, and this will show it to you here also. And I can also search. If I've got 100 pages that I need to sift through, I could, I could do Search and then find my page that I'm looking for. In any event, however you do it, select Pies, check it on, turn the check mark on, and then Add to Menu. And then we're done, right? No, we're not done yet. It put it in the wrong place. First of all, there's two things that we still need to do. One is that it put it in the wrong place. It put it on the same level indented as the rest, which means it will be a brand new top level menu item like the others. It'll show up like that right away. It'll say pies right here instead of being inside of the shop. So there, remember, we have to drag. I'm going to drag pies 
below cakes, but be careful. I'm about to drag it in. If I let go, pies will be a sub-item of a sub-item. Pies will be a drop-down item out of cakes, which is a drop-down out of shop. The point is, be careful before you drag and drop. Look where your dotted lines are. They should be right there. The dotted line now is at the same level as cakes, which means it's a drop-down of the shop rather than a drop-down of cakes. And then the last thing is remember to save. This won't become permanent until you save. And now that we've edited our menu, save the menu, now let's go to visit site. Open your the shop screen. You'll see cakes, you'll see pies. Click on pies and you'll see in my case, the one pie that I have. I see the name of the category. I see the graphic that I added to it. I see the pie. I see the description of the category. 12-inch Granny Smith pie. I can add to cart and so forth. And if you also look at the address, there's the name of my site, slash affordable vegan pies. Did that work for anyone? Anyone need a bit of help? Okay, that's because you needed your um, your rewrite module. No, it should work when you publish. But okay. before you publish, let's do this. Let's go from edit there again. Because we don't want to run the words all together. We don't oh, want to separate okay. it into dashes. Oh, I thought I had No, not, not slash dashes. Oh. Okay. Here I can't use underscore. I guess I'm you can, but the search engines don't like it as much as dash. Okay. I would just go to direct to publish. Okay. Did you, perhaps what you were missing was, did you add it to the menu? Maybe that's what you missed. Um, I had tried to. Let's check one more time. Um, okay. What do I, where can I check? I you can go to appearance and then mm -hmm. menus. Okay. Well, I know that I added it here, but I didn't use the stack category. Oh, maybe I didn't use it. No, it was there. Okay. Well, uh, go ahead and visit site. Okay, um, here's what's going on. Now go back. You didn't do the rewrite module. After you resurrected the site, you have to do the rewrite module, which is the very last instruction I told before. Okay. Uh, go ahead and click on the little bubble here. Mm -hmm. Just close that window. Okay. Click on the little bubble here. Oh, they just released it? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it's, it's going to give you a flash and you can want to show the video. Yeah, I usually love checking because okay. it gets, gets you up to speed. Um, so we do have, like I said, a rewrite module. Okay. Which is, I don't want to know we have to do it, but I did add it to my instruction report. Okay, I, um, yeah, probably because yeah. I had turned this off by accident. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so that was working with um, adding another page to the screen with, um, with a new category. What I want to work on is talking about variations, which are semi-complex. That's why we didn't get to them last time. Before we do that, you should, you should see where we're going. I've got the shop, and I'm showing only cakes, only pies, I want to have a page for only cookies. Now, I don't have any cookies yet because I want to add variations. But I can add a page that goes to cookies. It won't show any cookies, but that's okay. That'll save me a step. Let's go back then and add the cookies page to the menu. Remember, it's not just simply adding it. We have to create the page, add the little short code, then add it to the menu, and that's done. So back to the dashboard. We need to go to Pages to add new. What should we call this new page? I think I heard someone say cookies. Great. So we'll add cookies. Uh, I'm not going to worry about changing the permalink because uh, cookies is fine, but again, we can change it if we want. Good. Next, we'll add the category of cookies only to this page which is, again, that little credit card button there. I don't know why they have a credit card button. It makes me think it's some sort of payment method, but that's our button that we need. Click on that, and it says, what category? Cookies category. Insert it. So in this case, it shows that category ID number 7 apparently is cookies. Save that. I'm sorry, publish it. You should be able to publish directly. And now that I've published it, I need to add it to the menu. So back to Appearance Menus. The last document that I worked with was Cookies, so notice it shows up last or first. Go ahead and uh, check it on and then add to the menu and then arrange it. Cookies is in the wrong spot, so I'll rearrange it. I'll put it uh, wherever, but I'll, I suppose, under pies, and then save. If that worked, go ahead then and view the visit site. Go ahead and visit site, and then uh, check that page. And there shouldn't be anything on the page, but there should, but a page should exist. Visit site. Under the shop, now I've got cookies. Click on that. There's the graphic I added for cookies, the description. There are no products in this group. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to create some cookie products. Is everyone on the right spot? Curious uh, little side note. There's apparently, there's apparently five updates. A Kismet duplicator, jetpack, and the theme, as well as WordPress itself. So we're not going to spend time to do updates, but we've talked about updates before. Apparently there's a new version of WordPress 4.4, new versions of some of our plugins, especially Duplicator, that went from version, oh yes, so that went from version 0.5.3.4 to version 1.1. That seems to be a big update. When I talked about updates previously, I said uh, that it's usually in three numbers. The littlest number is a small update. I mean, the rightmost number is a, a small update. The middle is a relatively large update. And the first digit is a big update. So in this case, WordPress just did a little, little update. Uh, a Kismet, another little update. The duplicators seem to have made a huge update. Maybe they added brand new features, extra stuff. 
uh, we won't do the update but I'm curious what are the details and I noticed that what these guys do is they don't give you the detail right away you have to go to their website you don't have to do this I'm just curious what the changes are it's no longer in beta status after four years in beta we're moving to 1.x status huh. uh, JSON link scanner new compatibility error log cleanup F5 refresh it's kind of some type of product logo and new logo integration. Okay, so they've got a new logo too. It's compatible with WordPress 4. And apparently they fixed something with Windows XP. So sometimes these updates are technical, but usually they're they're positive. They increase capabilities or solve security issues. And I highly recommend that duplicator plugin and one more little segue, then we'll we'll get to it. Uh, if you didn't get the e-commerce uh, number 4 version 2 of the site, version 2 I gave in this class where it's got the part about um, the rewrite module, but I've also got there a link to purchase Duplicator Pro. If you follow that link you get a discount on it. Normally it's $59. Follow the link, it's $39. The point of that is then you get Duplicator Pro, which has more capabilities. I've been using it recently and I like it. Uh, I like that it has these extra features. It's faster. It seems to work better. And that's always the case, isn't it? You get a lot of free stuff online and you pay a little bit and you get a better version. $39 is, I think, really good because then you can use Duplicator Pro on, I think, three sites. Usually you buy a license and you can only apply the plugin to one site. And then you have to buy it again for another site. Duplicator Pro, it looks like, I believe they let you use it for three sites, extra cool features. Follow that link for the discount, because if you don't, it's $59. And my company uses it, and we like it. And I'm getting that from my PDF in the network folder. Instruction number four, version two. I didn't decide to make it clear enough. There is a version two of it, which mentions a couple of extra instructions and the link. But anyway, let's talk about then uh, variations in cookies and such.